What's up everyone, Steven here with Neural DSP. And today I want to show you how I dial in acoustic guitars using Neural DSP plugins. I recently did an artist tone demo of Opeth's Ghost of Perdition, so I'll use that for our underlying example. I began by recording with a pair of Rode TF5s and the straight DI for my Taylor 310 CE's onboard Fishman Prefix Plus system. Now the first thing I want to do is walk you through processing the DI by itself, which will probably be the case for most users, and then I'll show you a variety of my at different price ranges that you could integrate into your setup. That way, you'll have a better idea of what to look for if you're planning to get a mic specifically for recording your own acoustic instruments. I'll also include the recorded tracks used in this video in a link in the description so you can mess around with them on your own. Since there are a couple of different styles of pickups for acoustic guitar, for the sake of simplicity and since it's the most common type, let's say you only have an acoustic guitar with its onboard piezo pickup. Acoustic guitars with piezo pickups generally tend to sound fairly nasally and well, like this. The best way that I've found to make the acoustic DI sound fairly natural is to take the clean head or the cleanest setting on any of the neural plugins and turn off the impulse response section. Let's begin with a fresh instance of the Archetype Nolly, and I'll take you through the process. First steps, turn off the impulse response, lower the gain on the head so the signal isn't distorting, and simply listen. I want to get a sense of the overall tone and the attack of the pick while playing to see if I need to do any EQ, compression, or both. For this example, my ears tell me that I'll probably need a little bit of both. And I'll start with the compression. I want to tame the pick attack while simultaneously bringing the rest of the chord tones that are ringing out up. After the notes that are ringing out are brought up by the compressor, I'll go to the head section and make some minor adjustments to the master volume control and tone stack to compensate for these changes. I'm hearing a bit more in the presence area than I like, so I'm going to go ahead and try and boost up the master volume control and the mid range so I can kind of bring out the body of the guitar. Once I'm happy with the compression, I'll move on to my EQ section just to help shape the tone a bit. You'll see me pull up the faders to exaggerate the frequencies they represent, then dip them down to the level I feel will work well with the tone of the guitar. After that, I'll turn the EQ on and off to double check my work. Finally, I'll dial in some reverb. As an alternative, you could add some delay, but because this particular track is so note heavy, I opted to use just reverb to fill in some space. Also remember that you'll want to be careful about potential frequency buildup, so be sure to use your high and low pass filters.
So that's how I would dial in the DI by itself. I found that I liked the way that the Nolly handled the acoustic DI the best, followed by the Pliny and the Abasi. I'll leave presets in the download link in the description along with the tracks. Now let's talk about adding microphones to your setup. I had a bunch of these Rode microphones around my studio, so I thought I would use those. I have an NT1A, a pod mic, NTR, and a pair of TF5s. Remember, each mic has its own unique characteristics. So before you decide which one to use, I'd recommend that you think back to the vision you decided on at the start of your project. If you know how you want your track to turn out, it'll help inform all of your downstream decisions. Ask whether you want the track to be bright or dark. Do you want them to be mid-heavy, lo-fi, crystal clear? After you decide what you're going for, identify which mic and DI tone complement your overall vision. After a while, you'll get to know your gear much more intimately and will develop the ability to choose them first without having to listen to them individually. First off, when adding mics to your setup, and I'm going to harp on this a lot in this episode, always be aware of phase issues. You'll be able to see signals out of phase if you zoom in far enough. However, don't just use your eyes. Flip the phase on your tracks and try out all different combinations. This has the added benefit of training your ears to actually hear what phase sounds like. For example, we can clearly see the TF5s have inverted phase from the DI, so let's flip the phase back and forth and listen to how the low end frequencies cancel out. Okay, so after listening through the mics, I particularly liked the way the TF5s and the NTR sounded. So I'll use those two with the DI and show you how I'll blend them together. Let's start by EQing the individual tracks to get rid of the frequencies we don't want. Next, let's set up an instance of the archetype Nolly on the bus these tracks are routed to, then turn off both the impulse response and the head sections. I'll set up some compression and then use the snappy mode so that way it mostly just catches the pick transients. Then I'll use some additional EQ. And finally, I'll add some reverb to taste. Again, make sure the reverb doesn't build up a bunch of unwanted frequencies by adjusting the high and low pass filters.
One final thought. If you do end up using something like the Archetype Nolly on the DI when blending in your mics, you'll potentially introduce some sample delay on your DI track, so again, be sure to check your phase. So that is how I would go about processing acoustic DIs and the microphones using Neural DSP products. Thank you so much for checking out this video. Let me know what you thought and if you wanna see more content like this. Leave a like, share, subscribe, and hit that bell icon for notifications on when we upload new content to this channel. And as always, I'll see you in the next video.